What up, everybody? Back for another video. A monthly review. It's been a while, as always. I'm the worst YouTuber ever. I need more consistency, but whatever. It is what it is. We got six boxes here. Some of the few remaining subscription boxes out there. So let's go through them, talk about some shit in there, and give it a score. So first on the list, in no particular order, Zobi. I don't know why they stopped doing their personalized boxes, by the way. Why they started doing brown shippers. That's usually a bad sign, by the way. That's usually a sign that something's not going right. Not trying to jump to conclusions, but, you know, that's just something that it could be. First off, we got a shirt. <laughs> and Zobi, I've said it before, has the worst shirts ever. They're the worst subscription box shirts Honestly, they're just kind of the worst shirts possible. Not as far as the designs, just the quality of them. They're very cheap, very rugged, very itchy. They're just terrible quality shirts. So value-wise, it'll get the standard $12 to $15 value, but a score on that's only going to get a 4 out of 10. Wolf's awake, by the way, so he's going to come be distracting, so I apologize in advance if he distracts from the video. So $12 to $15 on that, 4 out of 10 as far as the score. Then we got an autograph. Doo -doo. And this is of Jonathan Lipnicki. And he was from Jerry Maguire? Was that what he was from? Yeah, Jerry Maguire. He was also in Stuart Little. He's been in a few different things. He also did some voiceover stuff. So not super famous, known, but not super well-known in the sense that he doesn't do stuff still. So for that reason, this goes for somewhere between like $20 and $30. It's on the lower end. Something to keep in mind, by the way, I'll mention this a lot, but the collectible market is currently in decline. It's about to take a huge dip. We're about to enter a recession and the collectible market is just slowly on that decline. It happens. It's normal. Don't freak out. It's just not the time to sell things. So the reason I bring that up is because a lot of these values are going to be a little bit lower than they typically are and they're going to keep getting lower and lower and lower. So just things to be aware of if you think the values are a little bit off this time around. So that goes for about 20 to $30, which is lower than usual. They usually go for 30 to 40 this is 20 to 30 but again not super well known in this modern day and age just for people that were around in what was it the 90s 2000s long time ago basically so 20 to 30 on that then we got a stick and this is from mighty ducks doesn't really serve any purpose it just is a stick and it has words on there I really couldn't find any information on this. I found literally one listing for it, and the person was listing it for like $24, which is crazy. That's a ridiculous price, but that's literally the only thing I could find. I'm going to go on like my own value and say, like honestly, being generous, I would give this like 8 bucks, if even that. So the range on this is going to be really wide. I'm giving it my value of $8, and technically, if someone wanted to buy it, the value they would have to pay, which is $24. I don't think anyone ever will, but if you wanted to, you'd have to pay $24. So value range, value range on that is $8 to $24. Hey, knock it off. And then the last item we got is a pin. And this is from Major League. We had one of two different options. They're doing different rarities now. So there was one that was limited to 100, and then there was the common one that was limited to 300. Couldn't find a ton of information on this either. There was one person listing the, the other pin, not this one, for 50 bucks. Again, people listing it for ridiculous prices. So I'm giving the standard like 12 to $15 pin value because that's usually what they go for. So that's pretty common there. But again, there wasn't a lot of information. So other signs that I kind of think that Zobi isn't in the best position right now, the fact that I'm not finding any information on the items in there, no one's reselling them, usually means that no one's buying them. They don't have their own box. So it kind of seems like this company may be in trouble. And I'm not surprised because like I said, the collectible market is in a steep decline right now. So you're going to see probably a lot of these subscription boxes go the way of the other ones that have in the past, and they're just probably going to go out of business. Not saying that's what's happening. I'm just seeing a lot of signs that may be pointing towards that. Maybe not out of business, but they may be pulling back a little bit. So that brings our value on the low end of 52 on the high end of 85. This is about a $50 box, uh, give or take a few dollars in either direction, depending on your state tax and shipping and all that stuff. So right around a $50. So on the low end, which is where I would really value this at, you're 
barely getting what you paid for, and honestly, that was being generous. On the high end, it's like 85, but that's taking into consideration the crazy prices people were asking for the pin and the stick. So I would not value it towards that. I would value it more at 52, and again, being very generous, so might not even be that much. So on the low end, honestly, you might not even be getting what you paid for. So for that reason, I'm only giving it a 4 out of 10, because uh, one of the pins was cool, but I didn't get the cool one. And the autograph was fine, like not bad or anything like that. The shirt sucked, as they always do. And then the stick is just kind of there. It's a stick, like, it's a fucking stick. So, not too much to say about it. What are you doing? Quit it. So yeah, 4 out of 10 on that. Next we got the BAM box. One that I think will be around for a while, at least I hope so. It's always been one of my favorites. Alright. First off with the autograph. We got Ray Porter, who did the voice of Darkseid. He's also done some other voiceover stuff, and he's done some acting as well. As per usual, no one's super famous, not a household name by any means, but you'd at least recognize one of the characters. I think most people would recognize Darkseid just from the, the uh, Justice League. So, you know, decent. And the value on that, woof! Hey! Stop! Value on that is 23 to 28. Again, lower than usual. Usually 30, 35, and up. 23 to 28, but I think that's partly because not super well known. The other part is, again, markets in decline. Then we got an art print from Derek Payne. We've actually seen artwork from him before. He's a somewhat of an established artist, and his like uh, prints that he sells personally do sell for pretty high amounts. These ones don't sell for a ton, but at least it's someone that has a following. And like Bam said before, they stopped doing the signatures in order to increase the quality of the artwork, which I think is fine. I think that was a good move. I always love signatures. Who doesn't? Who doesn't love signed artwork? But the quality on them was so low, it wasn't worth having a signature. So I appreciate the increase in quality. And I actually got the rarer one of the two, which I'm honestly bummed about because the, the, the common one was Daredevil, and I like Daredevil. I don't really care that much about Kingpin, especially this version of Kingpin. Nothing against him, it's just okay, so I might end up selling it. I don't know if it will sell, but I'm basing it on the comic one, common one, and that's going for like 10 to 15 bucks. It's actually selling, though, which is surprising. 10 to 15 and selling for that because usually the prints just don't sell at all. So it looks hopeful that they're getting better artists and actually selling, so that looks like a positive thing. Next, we got a prop replica, and this is from John Wick, the Blood Oath Marker. This is actually really cool. That's why I'm glad they brought back prop replicas, because they weren't always amazing, but whenever they had something made of metal, they actually made it of metal. It's not like a plastic, stupid thing. They did a really good job on this, and when they make things cast out of metal, it's very cool. It has nice quality, has nice weight to it, and it actually opens up, so... There are a lot of people that have made this replica, so there's a lot of different things out there. I tried to base most on what the BAM box did, but I couldn't find exactly. So this goes for around 17 to 20, which I think is fair. I think that's what it should go for. Next, we got the pin. They do different rarities on these, and they're back to doing different rarities on different characters, which I really don't like. This one, they have Hey Arnold. They had a glitter variant, but they also had Helga as the rare one. I really hated that they did that before because if you wanted to collect this little series, it's almost impossible to do. So for a while they were doing two variants and the rare ones were just the glitter version. I like that better because you can get the series without missing out on anything, but if you get the rare one, it still has some value there. So I'm not a fan of when they do that, but either way, got a common one and that pin goes for 12 to 15, which is very common for this, these style of pins. That brings our value on the low end of 62 on the high end of 78. Just like Zobi, this is around a $50 box, uh, give or take a few dollars. So on the low end, not great. Get, only getting a little bit more than you paid for. On the high end, getting uh, somewhat more than you paid for. So not great on the value, but not really bad either. Decent. Decent on the value. But we got some good stuff in here. I really like the Blood Oath marker. The print was at least well done, and it is selling, which is a rare thing for this box. And the signature was, you know, good enough, and the pin was good quality. So, all good stuff, or at least decent, but not great on the value. So, for that reason, I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. And that was the band box. All right, on to the next loot crate. At least we're getting consistent loot crates again. Hopefully, they're over that thing where they just kind of stop sending stuff for a while. 
But, you know, the quality has not been great because, as I stated in the last video, if you didn't watch that Catching Up with Loot Crate, I think they're just putting random shit in the box and not really planning it out anymore. And it just doesn't look like this company is going in a positive direction. So we got a shirt mm -hmm. from Army of the Dead. Or Army of Darkness, sorry, not Army of the Dead. Army of Darkness. And nothing really special about it. It's a slightly different color scheme than it normally is, but the exact picture that's on the movie cover, the exact picture that's been used a million times. So just very common there, just a slight color change. So it'll get the standard $12 to $15 value. As far as the score on the shirt, it's going to get a 6 out of 10, which honestly, almost always, that's what Loot Crate gets. Their designs are pretty basic. They're pretty straightforward. Nothing very special about them. Quality on them is like, okay, not really great, not really bad. So they almost always get a 6 out of 10 score. So it is what it is. Next, we got some socks. These are from Thundercats. Uh, those go for about 10 to 12. And last, we got a figure, an Aquaman figure. I'll be showing a closer up picture, but you know, it's decent. They did a decent job, which should be what we're getting because this company is owned by NECA. They're an amazing toy company. They do amazing figures, but the ones they usually put in the box are pretty crappy, honestly. They've been getting better, though. Uh, a value on that goes, surprisingly, for about 15 to 20. That's more than I would have thought based on the quality, but it seems like they're picking up steam a little bit. And they should. For a company like NECA, the stuff they put in there really should be worth high values. So that brings our value on the low end, 37. On the high end, 47. This is now a $35 box, which is very expensive considering what it is. And on the low end, you're barely getting what you paid for. And you're only getting three items when honestly, we really should be getting four. I think boxes should have at least four items. And the fourth item could have just been a pin. It, it's so easy for them to make, it doesn't really cost much, and why did they stop putting in pins? I almost feel like it should have a pin, but it didn't, and they, they put in this little card so you can see what's in the box, and then you go there, and they don't say what's in the box. So I feel like there was supposed to be a pin, and they didn't, but again, that just leads me to believe that there was no plan for this box. It's just kind of random stuff that they put in last minute. So for that reason, I'm giving it a 5.5 out of 10. Not great, just kind of average. So yeah. That's Loot Crate. Next, Geek Fuel. Now this would be a really short review because there's only one thing in the box. And it's the Keshi Pee Wee Herman figures. These are from Super 7. People really love Super 7. People shit themselves over Super 7 figures. I don't get it. I really don't. The quality of them is pretty low. And the ones they do have figures that are of really nice quality, but the price points on them are ridiculous. Ridiculous. They are so overpriced, but people love them and people are paying these outrageous prices and I, I just don't get it. Uh, uh, what was it? Um, Funko used to own this company. They put out the reaction figures. They were like six to eight bucks. No one bought them. Super 7 takes them back, puts out the exact same figure, charges three times as much and people are losing their minds over it. It's like, what, what's going on here? Like, am I going crazy? These figures in particular, not great. Not because the quality is not great, the sculpt on them is actually decent, but they're literally just one color. There's no paint job whatsoever. And if you've watched my past videos, you know I hate that. I hate when there's like no effort. I hate when it's just one solid color because it's just so lazy. And they overcharge for them. I think they charge like 10 bucks for one of these. It's ridiculous. So there are eight of them and they sell from somewhere between five and $10. So the value on it's like somewhere between 40 and $80. So the good news is, even on the low end, even at that $5 selling point, you're still getting a pretty decent value. This is only a $25 box, and on that low end, it's at least $40, so at least the value is decent. Although I'm not a fan of what they did here, I don't think they're getting any style points, it at least has value and it's easy to resell, so if you hated this box, you could pretty easily get your money back. So that's the good news about it. But some people, like I said, do like this. I don't. But other people do, and I try not to put too much of my own personal opinion on it. I try to make it for the general population. So for that reason, um, it's going to get a 6 out of 10. I saw this exact box selling all 8 of them, selling for at least 40 So $40 price point, it's still decent. So 6 out of 10 on that. I think it's fair just based on the popularity of them. I don't agree with it, but again, I try to take my own personal opinion out of it. There we go. Geek Fuel. Next. Marvel Collector Core. This one was Ant-Man Quantumania. 
Terrible movie, by the way. Hated it. Hated it so much. It was such a bad movie. Some people really liked it. A lot of people didn't. I hated it. I thought it was a terrible movie. Complete waste of time. Nothing positive to say about it. But let's review the box. First, we got a shirt. Hmm, smells good. I actually like the design of this shirt. I like the simplicity of it. Um, I like just the basic color design. And I really like the blue and gray. I think it goes really well together. I've said it a million times. I'm really over the pop tees. But this one doesn't give as much of a pop tee feel. It gives more of an artistic feel because it's very monochromatic. So I actually like this one a little bit. And Funko gives decent quality shirts. They're not amazing. But of subscription box shirts, they're pretty good. They're they're pretty good as far as quality so it'll get the 12 to 15 dollar value but a score on the shirt is going to get a 7 out of 10 again much room for improvement i wish they would just go back to the comic style i would have loved it so much more if it was a comic book style i would have loved this t-shirt we got a 10 out of 10 but uh, we're just pretty over pop tees at this point so then we got some pop figures as we always do and we almost always get two of them mm -hmm. all right oh so first we got Ant-Man, Unmasked. This goes for barely anything. The value on this is only about 12 to 15, which is pretty much standard price. In a store, if you bought an exclusive, they're usually 15 bucks. And I think that's because it wasn't a very good movie. A lot of people didn't like it, so I don't think there's a lot of want or need for this particular figure. Also, there's just a lot of Ant-Man stuff out there. There's been a ton of pops that have been done, considering this is their third movie. And also, one of the very first boxes we that Marvel Collector Core did was an Ant-Man box. I believe it was the second one. And it came with Ant-Man and a tiny Ant-Man, which was cool. And it said, world's smallest pop. So it's been done before, so I'm not surprised there isn't much of a need for that. Cassie, on the other hand, goes for about $35. I think she was a much more popular character, and she can relate to little girls and things like that, so I think there was much more of a need for that. And as far as I know, there wasn't a Cassie Lang pop. Uh, there may have been for stature or something like that. And I'm also surprised they didn't call her by her superhero name, which was Stinger. So that's who she was in the movie. She's been stature in the comics. She was Stinger in the movie. I'm surprised they didn't call her Stinger, but, you know doesn't really matter but yeah that goes for 35 so I think she was a much popular more popular character so that goes for that then we got a pin and a sticker I wish they put backings on these and a very cheap sticker I'm gonna group these together so because it's almost pointless to value this separately because it just almost has no value so together on those it goes for about eight to ten dollars online almost everyone sells them together so I thought it was crazy to just try to figure out value separately so grouping them together eight to ten so value on this one, on the low end is actually 67, on the high end 75. So really great value. This is only about a $30 box, and on the low end, easily double your value. So this is actually going to get a pretty high score. And on the high end, you're getting almost triple your value, and the things are selling. The Ant-Man one's not selling super well, but everything else in here is selling really well. And the t-shirt was better than we've seen lately, so this is actually going to get an 8 out of 10. Again, I'm not a fan of the movie, but I'm still a fan of these products, and they did do a good job, and it does have high resale value, so those are all positive things. And again, 100% exclusive, so that's very nice, and even in the market's decline, these things are still selling at a high price point, so that's very commendable. 8 out of 10 on that. Lastly, Pusheen Box. In my opinion, one of the best boxes. You know, even if you don't like Pusheen, the value on this is just crazy it's just so crazy good everything's exclusive and the quality on it is fantastic so let's start off with this we got a little pouch it's just a fucking strawberry has nothing to do with pusheen honestly oh he's on the on the zipper as a little milk carton so this is nice it's very soft very nice quality uh this goes for about 15 to 20 and selling for that then we got some notebooks nothing super special about them Pusheen doing different milk related things. I think the theme was milk on this. I don't know. So doing different milk related things. This actually goes for 12 to 15, which is also very surprising. Like these are such cheap notebooks. They're not like hardcover or anything. They're soft, bendable. You'd get a pack of these for like a dollar at the dollar store. Not necessarily with Pusheen on there, but it's kind of crazy how much that cat just marks the value up. So selling for 12 to 15. Very surprising. Then we got some magnets. Again, Pusheen being milk, juice, and a little boa cup. Uh, this goes for 12 to 15. Again, very surprising. Then we got milk or uh, Pusheen being milk again 
as a pen holder, and this goes for about 15 to 20. Really nothing super special about it. It's pretty basic, pretty straightforward. That's what it looks like. It's very basic, but that cat just really ups the resale value. Then we got a tumbler, and it looks like Pusheen, and it's got some little boba balls on there. That's going for about $30. We also got a figure, but this is where it gets weird because the figure is a tumbler. We got a real tumbler with Pusheen on there, and then we got a figure of Pusheen being a tumbler. But if you look at them side by side, they're pretty identical. I mean, they're different sizes when you take them out, but that's, that's a weird choice. Like, why put two almost identical things in there? That's kind of odd, but either way, it still sells 15 to 20. But I feel like this would have sold for a lot more. The figures in this box usually sell for like 30, 35 and up. I feel like it didn't sell that much because why have two of the same thing? So very odd choice, but didn't stop it from selling. So can't really complain too much. Then down to the last item. Oh, really nice straw. Didn't know that was in there. The last item is a jacket. Now this is actually a really nice jacket. Uh, it has like a denim texture to it. It's a button up. It doesn't have a big design on it, just pushing me and Boba, but it has like a denim feel to it. So if you feel denim, it has that exact same feel. It's just white. But this is actually a very nice jacket, really nice quality. But surprisingly, it wasn't going for that much. Uh, I thought it would have gone for a lot more considering how nice quality it is. It's only going for about 25 or 30, which is good. Still really good value, but I just thought it would have gone for more because if you go into a store and buy a jacket like this that's button up and that's like the denim texture, it's usually like 50 or 60 bucks. And Pusheen uh, ups those values because their sweaters that are in this box usually sell for a high price. So kind of surprised it didn't sell for more because the quality is fantastic on it. So that's another thing about this box. They really go the extra mile to put quality because we so rarely ever see jackets in any boxes sweaters sometimes on like upscale boxes and shirts all the time obviously but not really ever jackets like this so it's a really rare thing so that was all the items that brings our value on the low end of 124 on the high end of 150 and keep in mind everything I listed here is selling for those prices not listed selling so that is phenomenal this is a 50 to $60 box, like right around that range. On the low end, easily double your value, easily. You could easily get double your value out of this box. On the high end, almost triple. And for a 50 to $60 box, that is unheard of. And it's, again, I've tried so many boxes from this company, it's Culturefly. I've tried a million different boxes. I have two of them right behind me that are gonna be on next month's review, and none of them ever even come close. It just happens to be this cat is just very, very collectible. It's like Mickey Mouse. Anything that his face is on is just really collectible. So for that reason, it's going to get a 9.5 out of 10. I've stopped giving it a 10 out of 10 because I still think there could be room for growth, and I don't want to give it perfect scores, but it's about as perfect as you can get. A nice variety of stuff, all exclusive, all original, nice quality, high resale value. Like, what more could you possibly ask for? The only complaint I could ever see someone having is that they don't like Pusheen, but then just don't buy this box. Like it's very simple. So they are just fantastic. I don't know how they're turning a profit on this. I really don't. I don't know how they can put this much quality and design into this box and sell it for so cheap. I don't get it, but whatever. Not here to complain about it. It's a fantastic box. So kept things kind of short this time around. Kind of sped through those boxes, six of them. There should be some different boxes next month because some of the quarterly boxes, um, I got the Dunder Mifflin and the Friends box that are showing up next month. And hopefully I'll have some time to record some other stuff, but you know, probably not because I never do. But if you have any questions, feel free to send them out in the comments. If you have any questions just about collectibles in general or items, if you want an item, if you like an item, you see an item, always let me know in the comments. I'm happy to help with any questions that you have. Other than that, thank you for watching and supporting. I appreciate you all. See you on the next video. Love you all. Peace.